My name is Joseph Aquisto. I'm Professor of French and Chair of Romance Languages. So in my research, I look at literary answers to philosophical questions. Things like, what does it mean to know the world? What does it mean to know ourselves and other people? What is known as epistemology? Also questions of ethics. Uh, what is my relationship to other people? What do I owe to other people? How should I interact with them? I think literature has a unique point of entry into those sorts of questions. And a lot of my work tends to look at the ways poets, novelists, essayists tend to answer those sorts of questions. One of the things I've looked at is the question of meaning, how we arrive, not necessarily at truth about the world, but meaning in terms of our experiences and what it means to live in what a lot of people have called the modern world, um, dating from the late 18th century or the 19th century. I tend to establish points of continuity between the 19th century, which is the period that I study most, and our own time. My most recent work is on pessimism, which uh, tends to be something of a dirty word in um, everyday culture. People tend to like to think of, of themselves as optimistic and tend to think of uh, pessimists as somehow nihilistic or um, quietistic in terms of uh, shutting down options, in terms of making things better in the world. The, the word itself, the word pessimism, is a fairly modern invention. And I've looked at the ways that 19th century French writers, uh, nonfiction writers and fiction writers, have used that term, engaged with it, waged a, a battle in the press and other places about uh, whether pessimism is in fact um, defeatist or whether it can enable us to live well in the world. And I, I would side with the pessimists on this. I think that um, the authors that I, I write about are writing against uh, an idea of pessimism as a disease. That was something that was talked about a lot in the 19th century, that pessimism is this new modern sickness that uh, has to be combated somehow. Uh, the pessimists really reacted against that and said that no, actually pessimism allows us to live well by emphasizing compassion. Uh, if we are aware of suffering in the world, we're aware that everyone suffers and that we can maybe work together um, based on that sort of sense of human solidarity um, to not necessarily eliminate suffering, but to make it a little bit less. And so that has political implications in terms of the way we treat each other. But I think there is real potential there, and that's where I think literature comes in, to open up the worlds of imagination to us and imagining what other potential might lurk there behind um, a reactionary pessimism toward a more liberatory one, uh, the world of possibility there, of caring about uh, each other and recognizing limits. That's also something that, that pessimism encourages us to do, is to not see the world as boundless or, as, or progress as inevitable, but rather to accept that it might not be and to live well within the bounds of what's given to us and still not foreclose any sense of possibility beyond. On the current moment, uh, it's an interesting one. In, in the wake of the pandemic, I think a lot of people are rethinking maybe uh, notions of optimism or notions of um, the world as we always knew it, um, never being able to come to an end. I think a lot of us have seen the ways that in, in, a, in a flash, in a moment, a lot of what we took to be uh, given about the world or taken for granted about the world could in fact come to a, a very quick end. And so we can ask um, what possibilities are there, not necessarily approaching these questions with some sort of wide-eyed optimism, oh, everything will be fine. Maybe everything is not fine, but maybe that's okay. And maybe we'll be able to actually move past that um, together. I, I think there's real possibility in um, the stories that we tell each other about uh, our world and about our situation in it in terms of the way we live our lives. And I think the authors that we look to in moments like this um, give us new possibilities or ask us to imagine how the world might be different and how we might actually respond to catastrophe. Because if we can imagine something, it automatically becomes more manageable. People often are most disturbed by is some sort of trauma that is beyond the worst that we could have imagined. We allow ourselves the, the ability to actually move past that and to, to work together to cope and to understand and maybe to make things a little better.